let's take a look at what you just finished building. So here we go, we've got our climate control where I can turn the climate control on and off. I can slide the temperature and fan speed up and down. Um, we don't have to explicitly turn it on. I can just start dragging, which will automatically turn on the climate control. Our climate control is dependent on our windshield defogger state, and we can explicitly cancel it by hitting the power button, but it will set the other climate control back to its previous state, whatever it happened to be. I can adjust my seat warmers. I can turn on the rear defogger, and I can adjust my airflow to various places. In my map screen, I can move my map around and if I were on a tablet I would be able to pinch and zoom to zoom the map and rotate it and I can recenter the map as we see on here and I can set my route and this will be a voice experience. Home. And I can resume to the map. In my save screen I can go explicitly to my home guidance. And there we are, we'll stop. On the radio screen, I can browse through my radio stations. And remember, we used a fake database of sorts to make this happen. I can set any of these stations to my favorites. Let's say I wanna add Virgin Radio, I wanna add 102.1, and maybe I wanna add Q107. And there we go, it shows up in my favorites. And if I want to listen to any one of those in particular, I can tap on it and it takes my now playing screen. I can browse through all of the stations that are in my list here and I can switch to them. This we opted not to go back to the now playing screen but that could be something that you might want to test and maybe you make that behave in the same way the favorites did so when you tap on the favorite it goes to your now playing screen. And lastly our list automatically goes back to whatever is currently playing. So I'm playing the edge and if I change this to now I'm on flow 98.7 and I go to the list, you're gonna see it's highlighted and it's centered in my screen right here. On my phone screen, I showed you how you could make a configurable keypad here and this is made out of components. And I showed you how you can backspace through them. I showed you how you can make a special case so the display of these buttons is not quite the same as these items that are in here but their behavior is still identical. I showed you how to make this awesome contact screen. So this is freely scrollable, or I can use this turbo strip over here to jump to a particular letter group. And in our connect screen, we can just switch between our connected phones. On our sound screen, we are able to adjust our bass and treble using this stepped slider. And our fader works in the same way, but in a two-dimensional manner. So I can fade to the front or the rear, and I can adjust the balance to the left or the right, and it will snap to, if there was an invisible grid in here, it would snap to those invisible intersection points of these major ticks and these major ticks. We created a we created a component for this switch over here, and we set it up so that way we could relay the command to the switch by tapping on the label. And then finally on our car screen, we took that a step further and we turned this into a reusable component that mixed the label with the switch and relays the toggle command through to the switch. The feedback for this course has been overwhelmingly positive. Many of you have let me know that although the concepts are challenging, you've all thoroughly enjoyed learning the new advanced concepts I teach in this course. In particular, I'm thrilled to see that many of you are modifying the project design and the prototyping approach to suit your own use cases. This really drives home the point that my message is getting through and you are all on your way to becoming true ProtoPie masters. I encourage you to continue to experiment in order to build your own confidence to use ProtoPie in your own real world projects. And if you're able to share, I'd love to see how you've used ProtoPie to bring your own ideas to life. The ProtoPie community at community.protopie.io is a great place to show off your delicious pies. Eight hours of instruction is a lot, especially when you consider that we've released it in parts over the course of several weeks. ProtoPie is an advanced tool. Like other capable products such as Photoshop, Illustrator, or After Effects, it's not reasonable that you'll be able to master all of its capabilities in just an hour or so of using the program. But your time commitment will pay off. Don't underestimate the value of what you've just learned. High fidelity prototyping skills are rare in the design industry and advancing your abilities in ProtoPie will give you a significant advantage over other designers. 
Thank you for joining me on this journey. I hope you've enjoyed this course and I hope it will change how you approach your prototyping in the future. Until next time, happy prototyping.